Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be on who will see the coldest de de temperatures in December 2017. Um, sorry guys, I'm making this video late. I plan to get it out a little bit earlier, somewhere around the beginning of December, like December 1st or 2nd. But, unfortunately, I had a lot of school activities after school, so I couldn't really do the video, couldn't record it and post it, so forgive me that. I'll try getting it out as fast as possible. Um, so first we got to look at the NAO, and for those that don't know what the NAO is, it's pretty much, um, it's pretty much just if, whether it's going to be cold in the east, if it's negative, then the NAO, if it's negative NAO, then it's going to be cold in the east, warm in the west. If it's a positive NAO, it's going to be cold in the west, warm in the east. So pretty much opposite. And as you can see, for the next several weeks, the predicted NAO is negative. So what does a negative mean? Negative means blocking highs and they're cold highs. Um, so again, in this picture, this is a very strong negative NAO, and usually they don't. Uh, I don't think that this NAO that's going to be negative is going to be this strong and penetrate so far down into south. Um, all the time. I think it will penetrate down into south on several occasions, but I don't think it's just going to penetrate all the time, being cold all the time in the south. Um, also. I don't think it's going to go that far into the west of cold air. I think it's going to be confined somewhere around this line. It's pretty much somewhere along the line borders of Minnesota with North Dakota and South Dakota, the border, western border of Iowa, western border of uh, Missouri. Um, so this is what a negative NAO looks like. So cold air across the east, that's what's predicted. Now we got to look at the probabilistic ENCO, which pretty much predicts whether there's going to be a La Nina or El Nino. If you don't know what a La Nina is, I'll tell you guys in a minute because that's what it's predicted. You could see La Nina conditions are predicted to continue 65-75% to 75 chance at least through the Northern Hemisphere winter 2017-2018 with a continuation during the spring, but we're worried about December. And you can see December, November, December, January, the highest, strongest La Nina of the year. It's going to be at 75%. So what does the La Nina look like? This is what it looks like, blocking high pressure, and this agrees exactly with the negative NAO, because usually at La Nina, there's a lot of N more negative NAOs. Of course, there's going to be some positive phases, but I think for the most part, this winter is going to be negative phases, and that's going to swing the jet stream way up into north, into Alaska. I think this this time it will go so far north that um, it, part, so parts of southern Alaska will be actually warmer than average, and... It will bring the cold air further south this year, I, I'm pretty sure, and more to the confined to the east. So, again, somewhere along this line, and I think it will be further south. So, I also do think that the cold air will be more to the east this year, not as much to the west with the lining of pattern. But I do think it's going to be dry and warm across the southwest, and I don't think it's going to be dry and warm across the southeast. I think it's going to be cooler and wetter. So more snowstorms possible for the south. And the northeast and the midwest. So this isn't a good really looking map. But this is the best I could do. So bear with me. Um, This is what I think. I think starting from Maine. As far as you go further southwest. It will get warmer and warmer. So bitterly cold across the um, northeast. Um, as you get into the upper plains, central plains, it'll be cold, but not as cold. And then it'll get, it'll be cold, but sh a little bit slightly below average temperatures, but a little bit, um, plenty of, plenty of snow, but I think it's just going to be a little bit cooler, not that warm. And then across the Southwest, it's going to be, um, it's just going to be warmer, warmer than average. And if you're on any of these borderline colors, that if you say live in Des Moines, Iowa, and you're on the line of the borders, then you're just pretty much you could be either you could be just depending on the La Nina because we don't really know exactly where the lines are going to be, where exactly where the fronts are going to pass through. But pretty much if you're say in Des Moines, Iowa, Minneapolis, you're on the lines. So I would say that you guys would more likely to see. I can't really say anything because I don't know. But you could be either colder than average or much colder than average. And it's just up to the weather to decide pretty much. This is just what the statistics are saying, guys, for now. So um, I would like to also show you one last thing that other than the NAO and ENCO outlook is going to give to us. Just pretty much the temperature anomaly that's predicted. Because of that, you could see um, 
cold temperatures are going to be across the east with some moderation, ex especially to the west. But if you look at s mainly, there's going to be some warm air, but most of the time it's going to be cold shots passing through. And seen right now it's warm in the south, but there's another cold front that's going to be passing through with most, most likely some snow. So a lot of snow events, a lot of Alberta Clippers, and those can turn into nor'easters. So that's always exciting. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please consider subscribing and liking the video. See you guys in the next episode.